So who knows, maybe in the future, you guys will see some kind of budget-friendly sex hostel open up. Does that sound sketchy? I don't know. Anyways. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. It's me, Ali. You're probably looking behind me and being like, where is she? Well, I am in Charlevoix, Quebec. I'm actually at the Auberge where I live. This isn't the actual room where I live. Uh, I lived in here for maybe a couple of weeks last summer, but now it's turned into a room that you can rent. And if you guys saw the view, what I'm looking at right now, you'd be like, OMG. This is where I work. This is where I live. Half the time out of the year when I'm not traveling, me staying at a Nobel is just kind of a good segue into what I wanted to talk to you guys about today was sex hotels and my limited experience uh, traveling to them. I was in Mexico for a little while in the last year. I was there for about three months last year and maybe about a month in uh, 2022. Me and Gab started a little bit of a camping project in the jungle, which is a really, really cool place to live, full of scorpions and tarantulas. And no, I never thought I would picture myself living in the jungle with tarantulas and scorpions, but now I've learned to share a space with them. And let me tell you, the tarantulas are so cute. They're adorable. Maybe not so much when I find them in the shower creeping up on me or crawling on my face, but uh, just from a distance, they're very cute spiders. So that being said, in Mexico, there are two sex or adults only resorts. And when Gab and I were there, we said, okay, you know what? We gotta go try these places. A few things though, they are resorts, and they are so expensive, okay? No wonder the crowd at most of these places are slightly older because you need a good chunk of money to go and enjoy that kind of um, exclusive activity space. So we were staying in Puerto Morelos, which is on the Riviera Maya in between Playa del Carmen and Cancun. Y si tú me preguntas si mi español es muy bien desde que um, vivo en México, sí puedo decir que mi español uh, is improving mucho. Sí. Uh, entonces, one day I will do a video in Spanish just for you guys because I am still practicing. I still take classes. Quiero aprender a hablar mucho, mucho bien, bueno en español. In Puerto Morelos, there is a resort that is called Dreams. Is it called Dreams? I think it's called Dreams. Anyways, this one is a couples only nude resort. It's on the beach. And like I said, it's exclusive to couples only. And or if you are a single person that is accompanying a couple. But single people are not welcome, unfortunately. And it's a nude resort. While there are certain zones in the resort where you're able to be nude, I don't think you're allowed to be naked in the dining room. I'm not sure. I haven't been. But I did walk by the resort on the beach many, many times. So Gab and I would go for an after late afternoon walk on the beach. And the beaches are public, but they are zoned off for the, the hotel zones. If you're not staying in the hotel, you're allowed to walk by, but you're not allowed to loiter around there or else, you know, security guard will ask you to please leave. So just for fun, we would walk by the resort on most days and they have those beautiful beds on the beach with the mosquito nets and so on. And if we were lucky, we saw some beautiful nude bodies uh, enjoying their time. Sometimes there was nude volleyball, which was also fun to watch. You know, you got flying balls and boobs everywhere. And everyone was so friendly. And you're probably asking me, everyone, how did we know? Well, when you're walking by, you know, you can't help but strike up conversation with people. And we're from Quebec, so, you know, when we speak in French, we have uh, a very detectable accent. So there were from some people from Quebec. 
uh, a lovely couple and their third that uh, asked us if we were from Quebec and we just started having a conversation and it was funny they were all naked and you know they felt super comfortable and we were comfortable too and uh, just having some chit chat on the beach and they were telling us about the place and it's really great and they go there quite often and you know I could tell they were kind of hinting like oh you guys should come and stay the night and, nah, nah, nah. and you know they were swingers and we were like oh yeah you know we'll see we'll see uh, Gavin and I aren't swingers but uh, I was very flattered thank you for the invite and you're also allowed to have sex outdoors in public in certain er certain designated areas and I also think there's one jacuzzi space that you're allowed to have sex in. So when we were talking to the couple, they had told us that, you know, around sunset it's nice because everyone's kind of relaxing. It's the end of the day. And so if you're lucky, you'll see some people kind of, you know, getting it on. And I would just like love to chill and tan and like look over my shoulder and watch some people fuck. I think that would be quite nice. And then go have dinner. Go enjoy the shrimp cocktail and a pina colada. Anyways, so like I was saying, there is another resort in Cancun called Temptations. This one is also known as a sex hotel. It's 18 and over, but it is not nude. It is topless only. And this one is a little bit more of, I guess, an intro to these kinds of sex resorts. It's a little bit more... Um, friendly if you're looking to explore that's what I've heard from people and that's also what I've read online so the crowd is a little bit younger I'd say between 25 to 55 the average being in their 30s and 40s and it's a beautiful resort we actually stayed there one night we had a very generous friend who was coming to visit and uh, you know he just wanted to have fun and so he treated uh, the three of us to go stay at this hotel for the night. So thank you. And we get there at night and it was pretty cool. It's one of those huge like reception areas, you know, in these resorts, they're just massive, right? But the gift shop, you know, wasn't just your regular souvenirs. It was a sex shop, which was pretty cool. And as we're waiting to check in and answering the million questions that they're asking us, you know, I'm looking around and it just looks like an adult playground. First, everyone looks happy. Everyone looks like they've been freed. They're wearing these crazy outfits, probably something that they're not usually able to wear at home, but there they're able to kind of like let loose and put on that glitter if they want to put on that glitter. So... It was kind of a cool vibe. It felt very free. And we checked into our room, nice space. The When we went out onto the balcony, we got to peek in some of the rooms and there were some people having sex and foursomes on the balconies outside. So I was like, oh, hey, neighbor, what's up? Uh, so that was pretty cool, you know, nothing too weird about it. It was, it was nice. And we met for dinner. And our friend of ours, it was his first time too going to a place like this. And he was so impressed and amazed at just how comfortable everybody was. And that there's such a big community of open, free um, people out there. And it was a great dinner. It was one of those a la carte restaurants, Japanese, you know, whatever. Then we make our way to the main bar get ourselves a nice glass of wine which they serve to me in like a fucking pint like this crazy you know at these resorts they just like go crazy with the alcohol we were waiting for the show to start there were a lot of people and i must say the show was really really good it wasn't your usual like michael jackson impersonator show at a resort it was like some daft punk visual aesthetic shit going on dancers it was really really cool and the people were beautiful the people were fun and everyone was just talking to everyone we had a few people come up to us and just start conversations i went up to a few people there was a girl uh in front of us actually and she had a really nice butt and i just went up to her and i was like i'm sorry i don't mean to bother you but i just want to say like you have such a nice body and your ass is really nice she was like, oh my God, thank you so much. I'm always shy to, you know, show it off. And I was like, no, you should show it off. 
And, you know, she's like, hi, I'm Diane. I'm a doctor from, I don't know where she was from, Louisiana or something. And then her husband came up. She's like, this is Jim. He's in the army. And, you know, like just really cool people. They're like half naked in front of me. And we're just having a fun conversation. And, you know, as the night went on, I uh, met more and more people. So nice. Honestly, this community of, of people are so incredibly open and accepting and friendly. There's zero fucks given. There's zero judgment. And I feel like you can have a friend wherever you go. It's just incredible. So obviously I was like, you know, cruising for a third, but man, it was hard to find. Full of couples only as usual. If you're a single girl looking to be a unicorn, I swear you should just go there. You'll get eaten alive. It's like, it's crazy. So not that many single girls. If Gab and I were into swinging, we would have, you know, found someone or something or whatever to, to have fun with. But uh, we had fun by ourselves and with the people that we met and we danced and it was cool. You know, Gab doesn't really dance like that that much, but that night he was like dancing to all the cheesy, fun music they were playing. Puis, uh, c'est ça, had some great random conversations with some random strangers, then like hit up the midnight buffet, you know, cause there's food running in these places 24 seven. Got some like burgers and fries. We stuffed our face off in the corner over there. And then, you know, we went back to our rooms. I can't remember if we had sex or not. We for sure had sex the next morning because we always have sex in the morning. And next day came along, we enjoyed the breakfast buffet. And then I proceeded to go on the beach and enjoy the last couple of hours that I had at the place. Topless, tanning, roasting a little bit, getting some color. Felt really nice. And there were a whole bunch of pool games happening with like vibrators and sex toys and all kinds of stuff like that. And it was really funny to watch. Would I stay there for a whole week? Probably not because resorts are just not my thing in general. I think going for a day or two was just fine. And you know, would I go back? Like maybe the novelty has worn off for me by then. I would definitely be open to checking some other places. And then it got me thinking, you know, like why are there not more accessible places like this for people? Because like I said, they are so expensive. I think for the two of us, it was 500 bucks for the night, if I'm not mistaken. And then for a friend, I guess maybe half that, 250. I don't know if they charge per person or per room, but like it wasn't cheap. There's a whole pool of people who would like to participate in these kinds of activities. And I don't find they're so accessible. So, you know, then Gab and I went and had this discussion, like what if we opened a sex hotel of some sort, you know, we're already like working in that industry. So why not? And make it a budget friendly hostel type of place that is accessible for all people if they wanted to participate in these kinds of activities, you know? I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Like, do you know of any budget friendly sex hotels? I mean, I understand that, you know, they want to make it really exclusive and luxurious and, you know, it's a very niche community. But I mean, there are niche people that don't have a lot of money, but want to participate. So I don't know. Anyways, it's just an idea that we're kind of playing around with in our little fantasy world. So who knows, maybe in the future, you guys will see some kind of budget friendly sex hostel open up. Does that sound sketchy? I don't know. Anyways, um, let me know what you think about that. And whatever your experiences are, you know, trying these places, like I said, those are the only two that I've tried ever. So I know there are different kinds of places in Europe and in South America and all over the world. And I, uh, I'd love to hear the places that you've been to your experience, um, bad or good. And, um, yeah, we're going to continue this discussion as it evolves and as the idea evolves and we'll see if it turns into something or not. And I will obviously share with you guys, um, any more of my experiences moving forward in the future. So that's it. Thanks you guys for listening. Drop some comments below 
and I appreciate your support. I'm just getting started here. So right now my videos are just kind of based on, you know, whatever experiences I want to share and talk about and hopefully you guys get something from it and give me a little feedback and I will evolve this with time. So I love you guys. Mwah.